Thank you everybody for joining us for the launch of, oh well, the second launch of our uh, Wheelchair Educators Package. And uh, so this is going to be the first in this webinar series, which is gonna be the English version and then followed by um, Spanish tomorrow by Sarah Monera. And then we will also have uh, French by Paula Rushton next week. And then we'll have uh, Hebrew by Louis Rosenberg and then Italian by um, Marco Tofani. And uh, of course, uh, David Rusa will do our Swedish. So um, we hope. You, we hope you can um, share all these uh, webinar series with your network and colleagues too. So everybody's invited and we will also make sure to have these recordings available on our YouTube channel as well. So um, forward. So this is a very familiar group, but if you can go ahead and change your name, country and profession, for example, um, Kritika India, so project coordinator. So how you do this is by clicking on the participants and then click on that small icon more and then rename, you could um, rename yourself. So we all know everybody in this group today. Oops, um, sorry for all of the ones. Uh, so this is the agenda for today's webinar, the overview of the um, educators package and a demonstration. And then um, we'll open up the floor for Q&A. So um, ISWP background. Most of you know I'm not gonna, <clears throat> sorry, um, I'm not gonna spend more time on this slide, but I will be quick. So our vision is that all people who need wheelchairs, wheelchairs receive appropriate products and services with dignity, enabling them to access education, employment, and healthcare, and to participate in our communities. So uh, we are six million um, funded grant from USAID, and we are housed at the University of Pittsburgh. And this is a very exciting phase for us because we are transitioning to be a separate entity, hopefully by early next year. And then we also have um, five active uh, active working groups and subcommittees. And this uh, whole package was part of the um, training working group. And this is a snapshot of some of our activities. So we mainly focus on the products and the services and educators package um, is also one of the service standards. So a quick overview of the web itself. As many of you already know, there is a lack of appropriately trained wheelchair service workforce. Capacity building interventions are often short term. Also, the current wheelchair trainings and academic and regional training centers are either insufficient or inconsistent. Uh, may I please request uh, people to please mute yourself if you're not speaking. Thank you so much. So in the wheelchair stakeholders meeting that held in 2018, the wheelchair sector goal and 10 priority actions were established. One of the prior priority action is to support competency development. Stakeholders recognize the lack of competent personnel, which is a problematic situation and requested support to address this issue. So um, in the spring of 2020, ISWP received funding from USA to develop the wheelchair educators package as of ISWP's project and a steering committee was formed and a request for expression of interest was made in May 2020, looking for 25 volunteers and we received uh, more than 80 applicants um, who are interested to be part of uh, this project. So the scope itself is that the purpose is to guide the integration of wheelchair service provision education into professional rehab academic programs and regional training centers as a sustainable wheelchair workforce development strategy and the target audience is um, educators in academic and regional training centers from all income, centers, income settings that is high, mid, middle and low. And the focus is the how to integrate wheelchair content and guidance on content itself. And these are all our working group uh, members. So as I mentioned, we received over um, 70, close to actually 80 responses and we selected the steering committee um, had the criteria and then we shortlisted 32 members who can speak 16 languages and are from um, nine different professions, um, mainly OTs, PTs, educational experts, PNOs, and so on. 
So our organizational structure, we um, have six members in the steering committee and then the 32 members, the development team. And uh, we invited um, the selected participant, the members to be part of the six working groups. Some of them contributed in more than uh, one working group, which we are very grateful for. And then uh, a working group lead uh, led each group and the members worked on several action items after every bi-monthly or monthly meetings, depending on the workload and timeline. So um, this is the process. We had um, the, con the working group members worked on the content and we had the prototype ready. And then it was an iterative process of collecting feedback from both formal and informal processes. So uh, with members and intended users, so we had the internal review followed by the external review, we did the pilot, and then um, the launch just happened two, two weeks ago at the uh, WFOT Congress in France, Paris. And uh, the impact is that we inform the wheelchair sector, support the sector's goal, support good practice, support competency development. And then now we will move on to the demonstration of the um, educators package itself. So bear with me while I try to open. So our website address, everybody can access this is live now, wepweb.iswp.org. And then once you access the, if you, if you have already not selected the country, the first step is there will be a pop-up window asking you to select the country and I have already selected India. The nice part is that the website remembers your selection every time you log, like even you don't even have to log in. So it's based on your IP address, so which is very nice that it remembers. So um, the, the not, I'm just gonna quickly scroll through all the way down to our homepage to show you what that really means is that it will show you a quick fact on um, your, the country's population and the estimated number of wheelchair users and the number of personnel needed. So um, this data is all based on the World Bank data and which we will be updating every July. That's when the World Bank um, releases new data on the population. So this is very interesting to see um, on, uh, in, in all the countries, right? So we can select the drop down menu and then uh, select the country you'd like to see. So I'm just gonna go back here on the top. So we have a picture carousel followed by what really the educators package is. And then we have this uh, great three minutes video. I'm just gonna try to play. Wheelchair Educators package. Sarah had created for us. So this talks about the entire package itself, its purpose, how it was to built. Provide it, you need to have in mind the World Health Organization's eight steps for wheelchair service provision. Referral, assessment. So I'm just gonna quickly scroll. Make so curriculum modifications based on the structure and context of existing programs. To start your integration process. So the rest is what I'm going to walk you through today. So it, it, so this is a very quick uh, walkthrough of the entire website and it's very interesting. So this is a very short video. So please feel free to explore um, you have when you visit the website. And then next comes the sections itself, advocating, planning and teaching and evaluating. And so when you click on the, um, the icon here itself, you can um, you will see the learn more button, which will take you directly to their pages, respective home pages. And then quick stats here on how you can make the difference um, to increase um, um, trained personnel, wheelchair service personnel worldwide, and how you would do it too. And then um, more information on how ISWP and web work together and some of the highlights of our website, like how you can create an account to access and personalize your experience and then uh, create a visual of the wheelchair education efforts in your program and then find all resources shared by the educators. And then towards the end, we have the uh, video testimonials from uh, some of our working group members. Thank you so much for sharing them. So I have all of them here and also on our YouTube channel, followed by um, the written uh, testimonial from our, our members as well. So that's it about the homepage. Um, so quickly moving to the members here, I just wanted to mention that 
this is an opportunity to contact all our members, including the steering committee, the working group leads, and all our members by, click, by clicking their email, and then you can um, directly email them. And we also um, have other contributors and interns here. So the first section is the advocating. So um, by advocacy, we mean that you will actively support, defend, promote, and recommend the integration of wheelchair service education into professional rehab, academic programs, and regional training centers. So here we have um, who, we, who we really mean by advocates. And then um, again, a short one minute video on- uh, The wheelchair educators package. And then how we this, know that many educators fair. how this section could be used. So um, that there, followed by um, where do you want to advocate? So is it inside an institution, outside an institution, or both? So if you make a selection here, for example, inside an institution, it will take you directly to all the resources. And your selection is already remembered here. And then we have the resource type. So if you want looking for a report, a book, a website, so forth. And then uh, we have this very inter interesting section developed by the advocating working, advocacy working group, excuse me. So this is do it yourself. So uh, we have the DIY. So this is basically a presentation um, template that is prepared for you. So all you need to like do is just uh, fill in context. So I'll just show you, it's just, when you click on it, it automatically downloads to your computer. So this is how it looks. Just gonna open it up for you. So, so make your own advocacy presentation. So we have the content here for you and have um, text throughout the presentation mentioning what you need to in, in, insert where and then customize it as you would prefer. So this is these are some of the interesting resources that, that the advocacy working group put together for you to use and share with others. So um, that is the DIY. So do it yourself resources like highlighted as well. And then we are also collecting resources in uh, as many languages as, pos as possible. So if you have uh, or would like to um, share resources from your program or from your colleagues who are interested to share, please be welcome um, you to um, share them either directly on the website, which I will show towards the end how to, or just email me directly. I will be sure to drop my email address in the chat. So um, this is inside an institution. And so is the selection for the outside an institution. And then overall, um, you can also choose all to see all the resources. Overall, we have put together 39 resources um, from different um, organizations and um, other evidence-based resources for you. So moving on to um, planning and teaching. So in this section, you will find guidance on how to plan and teach wheelchair service content based on the WHO eight steps for manual wheelchair provision. Again, followed by the same format, we'll have a short video describing what this section is about and the, some of the highlights and what you can find um, in this particular section and how it can be useful to your program. So um, we keep scrolling and learn more. You will find the eight different uh, steps WHO steps, and if you click on uh, one of them, for example, you'll be brought into the section called the eight steps, where um, we have arranged the topics by um, step content, the planning considerations, location, facilities, human resources needed, how to teach this particular step, um, and then the recommended equipments and tools, documentation, and other comments related to um, contextual adaptation implementation. And we've also arranged objectives on uh, this particular step. So the learning objective, how do you teach them? And then how do you evaluate? So um, this is a, a very uh, extensive work done by the planning and teaching group. So we have this for all the eight steps, which is amazing resource here, right here for, um, so, so we've arranged all of them here. And then um, the overview is also right there. So um, 
the introduction content, planning consideration, and how to teach the content, and then the objectives are also explained here. So you can use this activity. Um, so we've also provided examples throughout um, the, this section. So let's go to the resources, particularly for planning and teaching. So we've arranged them by steps, one to eight. And then the type of evaluation, it's a course evaluation, wheelchair service evaluation, student evaluation. And then uh, we also have training resources on how to teach, teaching materials, online training resources, in-person training resources, and then blended. And then resource type again, book, website, report, video, et cetera. And then languages is still gathering. So we would appreciate you also sharing and helping us populate this particular section. So also all the other sections. So um, you can filter them by these categories that I just showed. And then overall, this section has um, 31 resources. So uh, let's move on to evaluating. So evaluation um, is critical to support and improve your course. And this is actually not the student's evaluation. This is to evaluate your overall course or program or its clinical impact or sustainability. So we have categorized them by pre-course, during the course and post-course, post-course, excuse me. So uh, within each section, you will see process, program, and then clinical impact and then sustainability. So if you click on any of them, you'll be directly taken to that particular section, which is arranged by an accordion menu. So um, you can then also view here. So for example, during the course, clinical impact on the things you need to think about, the ways to measure your goal, and then resources and strategies are also um, just added there itself for your easy uh, references. Similarly for sustainability, things you need to think about and then ways to measure your goal and then resources and strategies. Additionally, we also have resources for this particular section. So um, they're grouped by type of evaluation and then resource type as well. So training program, website, peer reviewed articles, um, and then report as well. So this whole resource section can also be directly accessed from the me menu itself. So it's the resources here. So something that you might not be noticing is that we, all that I have shown right now is only open for um, users who are not registered on our website. So you see, I'm not logged in. So we welcome people to um, register on our website so they can actually uh, take benefit of the entire features that we have built. So uh, for example, I will show or walk, I'll walk you through all the um, features that is exclusive only for members. We um, have a very short um, registration page here. So just username, first name, last name, and then you can register. So I've already done that. So let me log in. So as soon as you log in, um, you will be um, taken to the website. Because I'm an admin, I'm, I was able to see the dashboard, which you won't be able to see it. So sorry about that. And then you will see your name being read like on the top itself. So when you click on it, we call this whole section as the dashboard, my dashboard, my account. So um, here you can um, edit because I'm the admin. So you will see edit profile. You can edit your profile. You can um, add more um, information about yourself. And then new speed is something that you, uh, we will try to, um, um, share announcements that are useful. And uh, if we've added any resources in a particular um, language, we'd be sharing those them, those here as well so that you, you know and you can go in and check them out as well. So any updates to the website from our end will also be updated here. And if you have any announcements from your program or would like to um, share anything um, related to uh, integration of uh, wheelchair, uh, content into your program, we are happy to share that information with our members here as well. So you, all you need to do is just contact um, me and then I, I'll be sure to get approval from the team before um, sharing here. And then, oops, sorry. So next is the SMART goal. So this is a tool that we built, built um, to help you create your SMART goals. So a specific, measurable, attain, attainable, relevant, and time-specific 
and rate them using the goal attainment scale, that is the CAS for short. Um, so again, we have a video here. This is a um, five minutes video on how you can use this tool to, um, to uh, keep track of all your goals. Just gonna quickly. It's to think about what you want to achieve by using this virtual educators package. Do you want to add new content to your curriculum? Do you want to advocate for funding for clinical instructors with expertise in wheelchair service provision? Or maybe you want to design some new assessments. There are many things you may want to achieve from using the wheelchair educators package. So these are just some examples. So um, Sarah had mentioned, so these are some of the examples on how you could keep track of your goals. So we've given an example here. So by um, by a certain date, I will, for example, send my students to the ISWP basic test to evaluate the effectiveness of their course. So um, do this right now here. So we can. And then all you have to do is click save, and it's going to save here. So you can edit by clicking on that edit icon and then um, expected outcome is zero. So the current state is two. And then if you can, if you like to add more notes here, you can do so. And then while you're progressing in this goal, you can come back in and um, change your gas accordingly. The, the good thing is it, there is a history like you can also once you've attained this goal you can archive it and look at it later there's a modified date too so you know when you did that and also in the news feed sorry just i'm just too excited to show all the features so um here in the news feed you we will also send you reminders if your goals are getting too closer and if you haven't been updating for some time we will also um if you are if you allow or um, let the system allow to send you reminders we will send through email or update here letting you know that you know your goal is coming up have you updated and how you're doing so those kind of reminders will also be sent there so we definitely um, encourage everybody to please make use of this uh, great feature that we have built so this is only accessible for people who have a profile on our website and then next comes is, uh, this is the program profile. Again, we encourage you to create your program profi profile to describe your own um, integration efforts, advocate for need, need, uh, needed resources, and to inform your next steps. So for example, um, we already have several partners who have created um, these program profiles for us. And you can also do so by simply just completing a Google form, it's available in um, Spanish and French and English. And then our team member will then get in touch with you to confirm. And then um, if you agree with all the content, we will then post it on the website after your permission. So this is from Dr. Uh, Mario Toro a few years ago. And then we also actually have an updated version. So where, she, uh, where their program was from, from advocacy to planning, and then course development and then first time implementation and how they have improved. So this is something you can create for your own program <clears throat> as well, excuse me. So again, we have a short video on how you can do so. So um, this is, we've tried to package as much information as possible. So it's very easy for um, all of you to menu the website. So again, this is the wheelchair statistics that uh, I had shown, uh, I showed um, in, on our homepage. So this is the same drop-down menu with, you can select the countries and then um, the stats will automatically <clears throat> change here. So Brazil, 212.6 million population, and then the number of wheelchair users in that country and then the personnel number of personal trained um, needed. And then request support. Um, if you need any support manuring the website, um, or if you need help with anything, like um, adding resources, contributing resources to the website, 
or if you would like to create your own program profile, not sure how to do so, or if you have general feedback on how to improvise um, the experience for the users, please, we welcome all suggestions and feedback and uh, we would like to hear from you. So please you make use of this form right here and uh, we'll, sure, we'll be sure to um, get back to you as well. And then this forum here, of course, is only limited for um, the internal, uh, internal as in the members who have a profile only. So um, you can start your own discussion here as well and ask any clinical questions with any partners. And again, these will also be reflected in the news feed, news feed excuse me. So somebody uh, who's logged in might also uh, see the bubble and then um, join your discussion as well. And uh, um, we also have the bookmark. This is one of my favorite feature here. So um, for example, here in the resources, you're in a hurry or you want to um, check back on a particular resource later, but you really like, um, you know, you quickly looked at it and you wanted to know, learn more in detail. All you need to do is just add it to bookmarks. It's gonna then change the color and then you can go back um, to do what you were doing and then come back later and see the bookmark um, resources right here. So you can access them right from your dashboard. So that's one of the um, very nice, my favorite uh, feature here on the website. And then we also have uh, the frequently asked questions. So if you, we've um, continuously, we are continuously updating the website. So if there are any questions from the group or our members while accessing the website that we think is um, commonly asked and we would like to respond, we will we'll be making sure to add them here as well. So right now we um, just have general questions and feedback here, but, um, if there's anything that you would like to um, know more in detail, we'll be sure to uh, add them here as well. <clears throat> so that covered the dashboard. So i um, like to take you to our um, academic training partners. So we have listed all our partners in this very cool map here. So uh, for example, if you focus on uh, Middle East, we have Jordan, it takes you right there to our partner in Jordan. So we have two partners, University of Jordan and U Jordan University of Science and Technology. So firstly, so these partners are um, either universities or uh, training programs who have integrated wheelchair content into their program or would like to, or are facing challenges. This is the group that they <clears throat> get together and um, try to, um, communicate with each other and uh, resolve their issues. So we have presentations and meetings every other month, bi-monthly. So um, the next one is actually happening this week on uh, Wednesday, um, September 16th. So we have a partner from uh, the, the UK. Um, so North Wales Posture and Mobility Services, UK. Uh, Jay Jagannathan, who's the clinical lead, <clears throat> he's going to share how they have integrated wheelchair content into their program and uh, what the challenges they have faced and um, the improvement, improvements that they would like to share um, with everybody. So, oh, sorry. So, um, that's something that um, we encourage participation in this group. So, if that's, if that's of your interest, you can, you're welcome to join this group. So, Again, all you have to do is just contact me. Um, I'm just gonna drop my email in the chat here as well. And this is, a, this is an open meeting, so anybody interested can join. Um, and if they're present, they presenting and if they have created program profiles, we will then add their presentation and program profiles on the website with their permission, of course. So um, you can click here, Jordan, to see the presentation that they have presented during one of the academic training partners meeting. So we actually have 29, uh, no, sorry. So 30 partners from uh, 22 countries. That was the last. So with the UK, we will cross um, 32. So here, towards the end of this page, we have a form for you to become a partner and to also contribute a resource. So all you have to do is just complete um, the simple form and drop in all uh, your resources. This will just directly um, 
go to your, uh, like you can choose the files from your computer and then just drag them here and then click submit and we will receive them and we will make sure that they are uh, relevant and categorize them accordingly to like if they fall under advocacy or planning and teaching or evaluating. So we'll make sure to um, categorize them and add them here. So that's about the partners. And I just wanted to go back here to show you that we have specifically another section. Um, so you, you were not able to see that before because I wasn't logged in. So this is the educator develop resources, which is uh, only available for members. So we have about 72 resources from um, seven, eight universities. Um, so th these are uh, resources that are class notes, case studies, videos, assessment of the program, syllabus, lecture, project instructions, rubric, online modules, exam schedule, workshops. So this is um, just a huge um, pile of resources that we have put together for, um, for you. So um, for example, I will um, share my study and trail and my online modules. So you can see um, the links to all these online modules here. So you, you can also, there's also a way to download them. So online modules, obviously not, but you know, case studies and other resources which are downloadable. Um, sorry about that. So there's a case study here. You can also bookmark them and also be able to uh, download them. You see this icon here should be uh, able to download. So these are um, the specific educator shared resources that are also available for members only. And uh, there is also a contact us page here in addition to the one you saw um, on the dashboard. So you can also reach us through this way. And I think that brings me to the end of the demonstration of the entire website. I hope that was helpful and I wasn't too fast. So um, I will just, just wanna make sure going through my short list or hints. Yeah, I think that that covers all the features that we have worked very, very hard for the last two years to build. So that brings me to almost the end of this webinar here. So I would like to now open up the floor for um, your thoughts. So what do you think are the limitations of the web and what adaptations that web may need and in which settings do you think the web may be used? Do you think the web could be used in your setting and what are the strengths of the web, web based on what you have seen and learned today? So I welcome um, feedback, suggestions, questions from the team, uh, from the group. So um, just looking at the chat, Ed says, great presentation, Kritika, I need to, okay, thank you. Thank you, Ed. Um, Suresh says, excellent presentation, Kritika. The web package looks simple to navigate with very useful resources. I need to leave. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for joining, Suresh. Resources are more than we thought. Brilliant. Thank you, Mihiran. Excellent presentation. Feedback will be given. Thank you, Tharad. But um, please, anybody who um, to speak up, you can do so by unmuting yourself and share your thoughts. And um, ways for us to improvise. Thank you, Kritika. That was a really awesome overview. It's so nice to see it all together and ready to be used. Really amazing work to the team. Thank you, Paula. Okay. Any questions, feedback? Comments from the group? Can I ask a quick language related question? Sure. Thanks. <laughs> so 
on the website with the, are we able, for example, um, to click French and then the general pages, I know the resources won't all be, obviously it's not going to translate the resources into French, but it automatically translates the, the pages themselves into the different languages, if we choose French, for example. Yes, thank you so much. I think that's one of the uh, things that I mentioned, did not mention, I'm sorry. So we do have um, the, the language selection here, right in the front. So there's two. One is the country that you have selected, the, the country of your residence, and then the lang your preferred language. So for example, French, the whole um, website, like all the menus, everything will change. Like even the, um, the text within the nugget of the resources. But uh, the, if you click on the resource itself, will will not uh, be able will not change. So um, that is I look into it, but um, that itself would not uh, change. Unfortunately, did I answer your question? You did. That's perfect. Thank you very much. I'm actually thinking for when I do the the webinar in French. <laughs> next week if it's going to show up in French or if I'm doing like automatic quick translations <laughs> no I think that's that's why <clears throat> sorry uh I think I I need to work to actually add Hebrew here so that Lori can also walk the whole website in Hebrew mm -hmm. but we already have Italian and um French is here then I also need to add Swedish so it's easier to um it's not in Hebrew. Most people can read English. Okay. Sure, sure. But I can just add it here just in case, you know, you're doing that presentation. It's a really great, um, really great option to be able to choose the language for the site itself. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> 